Hey guys, welcome back to Motorcycle Maintenance Channel. On this episode, we're going to show you how to use a Black Widow bike rack carrier or similar off-branded carriers that go onto your trailer hitch. Similar to a bike rack, except we're going to use it for a motorcycle. And we're going to show you how to safely load your bike onto said bike rack. Stay tuned. So this is our motorcycle rack carrier. Weighs about 100 pounds, so if you're not a bigger person, you might want to get some help also to avoid injury to your back. So we're going to stick it through this hitch here. Now once it's in there, these holes will line up. We'll take our pin to go through the hitch and then we'll stick this cotter pin in here to lock it into place. So this, uh, this is a Black Widow branded bike carrier, but there are many other ones that are off-branded. They all work the same, and they're all pretty simple, so I don't have any confidence issues in any of them. This one did come with a hitch stabilizer. It goes like this. This is not the hitch stabilizer it came with, because that one broke over time. This is an aftermarket one, and you can purchase them on Amazon for $20. Um, so it just goes on like that and then we'll tighten it down and it stops the, the vibrations from, from your bike shaking around on you a lot. So we'll put that on there. And then we'll tighten it up. You'll notice I'll go from one side to then to the next just to, to get it on there. Because one side will get tight and then the other side will get loose. And you'll tighten the other side. Eventually they'll both be pretty tight. Now you'll see it doesn't really shake as much, so it's a lot more stable. Now you don't want it to be completely still, because if it doesn't move at all, something could snap. But that's, that's about right where we are. All right, so now we have our bike carrier attached to the car. So it's time to load. When we load, we want this thing, it rocks back and forth. We kind of want that in that position. And then we'll take off our ramp and attach our ramp to the back side. All right. Ramp comes up. There's two holes, there's two little posts here that go through these holes that secure the ramp. Line those up. Almost ready for the bike. Let's get our toe straps ready. In the back of the bike, we're just gonna use a, just a regular toe strap. I like to put the ratcheting mechanism on this side, just so it's no one no one will mess with it. Though if they're gonna mess with it, it probably won't stop them. Get that one there on that side, so that one's ready to go. Come to the front. To the front, on this demonstration, we're gonna use some ATV tie downs. They pretty much just swing over the bars like this and secure the bike. And this side will go on the bottom, right there. Um, there are better options, I believe, like Canyon Dancers. We may show those in a later video. But for right now, this is what we have. All right. Now, to push the bike up here. This is another thing where you might want to have a friend help. You don't have to, um, but you know, if you're a smaller person, get a friend to help. I sometimes struggle with it. And it helps to get a running start, so. Get 
There we go, and it's on. Just kind of use the momentum to push the bike up over that lock. With the back straps, you want, you want to go through your passenger pegs. If you don't have passenger pegs, you're going to go over and around your tire. But since we have passenger pegs, we're going to go this way with it. Tie it there. We'll do the ratcheting mechanism here over here. Pull it tight. and proceed to ratchet it down. You'll notice the rear suspension squish as you ratchet it down. You really don't want to ratchet it down more than three or four, well, that might be an exaggeration, more than maybe two or three inches because you don't want to put too much stress on your rear shock. A couple inches is enough to keep it on there pretty secure. Maybe one more if you're worried, but. You still want, you don't want to stress out your rear shock too much. So now you got that on there. We'll move to the front straps. With this strap, we're going to feed it up alongside the fork. And come this way. Pull it up on the top side. We're gonna go around here and then back down this way so that we can get it to come through here. And we might have to adjust it out. It's very important though that when you do this, there's various ways you can go about securing this. You can come here, come here, or you can go through your lower triple tree clamp here. Now it's difficult on the R6 to do that because there's cables coming through here. On this side we can, but on the other side you'll notice that there's a bracket holding your throttle cables in place. You don't want to squish your throttle cables or your brake lines or your clutch lines or any other electrical lines for that reason, for that matter. So you want to make sure you're not squishing or putting pressure on any lines at all. Your handlebars can handle it. And just like that, it's on there. We'll pull it tight as we did with the rear one and start to ratchet. It's good to get a base for how far this tube is from the bottom. You see it's about right there. You don't want to compress these shocks more than half an inch. So we'll probably bring this down to about right here on my finger. Okay, We'll just get it snug for right now and we'll work on the other side. All right, just like before on your clutch side, we're going to come up alongside the fork. Pull it up this way. And we will go around this way. Now there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on the brake side. You have brake lines, throttle cables, a lot of you know, electrical stuff. You don't want to put any pressure on any of those wires. Okay. Feed it back down through here. And right there, we're going to clamp it in. Once we, once we fed it around and we make sure none of our cables are having any kind of pressure from these straps on them, we're just going to put this little ring there and it's in. Now we're ready to start ratcheting on this side. Go ahead and give it a tug. Make sure all the cables are out of the way. It's in a good place. All right. We'll go ahead and start ratcheting it down. Now we can do a little bit on either side. Um, 
You want to do it to kind of even the bike out too, so it's not leaning too much towards the vehicle or too much away from the vehicle. And all the while checking to make sure you're not compressing your forks down terribly. Okay, so that's probably three quarters of an inch on your forks on both sides. And they still have a little bit further they can travel so that they can also suspend, they can go up and down along with the bumps in the road. But that's good right there. Now you don't want to, you want to, you can go up to like 70, 80 miles an hour with these, but you don't want, if the road condition changes and it starts to get bumpy, adjust your, your speed accordingly. If the road's smooth as glass, feel free to go as fast as you want to. And as soon as it starts getting bumpy, make, you want to make sure you, you know, you're mining your way. You want to tie these. Any kind of knot you find, you know, tie them so that they're not dragging on the ground. Get them up and out of the way. Tie them all together. Sometimes it's good to leave just a little bit extra of this fluorescent yellow so people know, hey, there's a bike here. But you don't want it hanging to the floor at all. And you want to make sure it's good and tight here so it's secure. Next, you'll take your ramp. and we'll put it back into place. And then twist those all the way down so the ramp doesn't come off. And that's it. You've successfully loaded up a motorcycle to your motorcycle carrier. Stay tuned for our next episode.